We have more than 40 offices in 19 states and 2,000 employees. We're a full service consulting firm. We have architects, engineers, consultants, environmental scientists, IT. We pretty much have the whole gamut of staff. I've been with Dewberry for about four years. I came from Frederick County government. I used to work with their Office of Sustainability and Environmental Resources, and I was there for about 10 years before coming to Dewberry. How did I get to where I am today? I'm originally from New Orleans. I went to school at Oregon State in Corvallis, Oregon, and then signed up for AmeriCorps and moved to Maryland. One thing my dad told me as I was going through high school trying to figure out what I wanted to do when I grow up, I still haven't really figured that out. <laughs> Find something that you love to do and that you're passionate about because you spend the majority of your life working. And if you don't enjoy it, it's miserable. So I thought long and hard about that. I was always a plus and funny kind of person. Biology was my passion in high school. And I wanted to go someplace new. I wanted to leave New Orleans. I wanted to experience new things. I picked up, I moved to Oregon. I didn't know anybody. The scariest thing I've ever done in my life. But it was also one of the most rewarding. It was a great experience. I made wonderful friends. And then five, six years later, I picked up again, moved cross country. I didn't know anybody. Uh, I joined the AmeriCorps. They had a program called the Maryland Conservation Corps that allowed me to get involved in environmental science, Chesapeake Bay restoration. I got to work with a lot of wonderful folks at municipal governments with the Department of Natural Resources, Maryland Department of Environment, and it kind of opened the door for the rest of my career in Maryland, and I've been here ever since. 15, 16 years later, met my husband that way, and I never left. What do I do? In a nutshell, I work to improve water quality in local streams and the Chesapeake Bay through development of watershed plans to reduce pollutants carried by stormwater runoff from impervious surfaces. That's a huge, a lot of words there. My regulatory drivers that I help local municipalities to meet are Clean Water Act, the National Pollutant Discharge and Elimination System, and the Chesapeake Bay Total Maximum Daily Load. Show of hands, how many people have heard of the rain tax? It's a misnomer. It's not actually a tax. <coughs> it is an evaluation of your property and how much impervious area you have and how much runoff comes off of your property and what we can do to help reduce that and remove some of the pollutants. Terminology. I threw out some big numbers. A watershed. We are within the Chesapeake Bay watershed. It's 64,000 square miles. A watershed is all of the land area that drains to a body of water. It can be the creek in your backyard, it can be the Chesapeake Bay, it can be the Mississippi River. It drains six states in the District of Columbia. There's over 17 million people that live within this watershed, 10 million of which live along or near the shores, and it drains over 100,000 streams, creeks, and rivers. So how does what we do impact the Chesapeake Bay? Well, all of that land area within Maryland in our local streams drains to ultimately the Chesapeake Bay and impacts the life that's there. I threw out another term, impervious surfaces. Those are the hard surfaces, the roads, the driveways, the rooftops that we put down during development. And they prevent rainwater from actually soaking into the ground. Surface water is actually stormwater runoff. So if you see in this here, this is more of a natural environment. You see some forests, you see trees. And when it rains, most of the water percolates down into the ground and is treated. Pollutants are removed by all the microbes and the bacteria that live in, in our soils. And just a little bit of it runs off the top. Whereas in a developed environment, like what we see in Baltimore City or in any of our cities, you have more of these hard, impervious surfaces, so less space, less green space for the water to actually percolate down into the ground. So less of it gets treated into the, into the ground and more of it runs off. That leads to higher flows into our local streams, which then has further negative impacts. <coughs> Stormwater runoff, I keep throwing that around. That is completely different. The stormwater system is completely different than a wastewater system. So when you take a shower and you flush your toilet, it goes into a pipe and it goes to a plant where it's actually
actually processed. Whereas with stormwater, it runs into an inlet or a catch basin on the street, it goes into a pipe, and a lot of times it goes directly into the local water body, completely untreated. So whatever you see on the road is ending up in your stream in your backyard. Or, like this, this, and this eventually end up here, or here. So if you're a person who likes to swim in the lakes or likes to go to Ocean City and swim in the beach, stormwater is eventually getting to those water bodies. And so what I do and what I help our local governments do helps to reduce what is actually getting into these catch basins and what is ultimately ending up in these bodies of water. Environmental planner, environmental scientist. 
scientists, they do stream monitoring, they collect water, they send it off to labs to analyze the chemistry. We have statisticians who evaluate the results of all of that. They look at forests and say, okay, well, how, what percentage of this forest is this kind of tree versus this kind of tree? Or we look at um, different kinds of stormwater best management practices and estimate the pollutant load. How much nitrogen is it going to reduce? How much sediment is it going to reduce? Uh, we obviously have engineers. I'm not an engineer. I work with all engineers, though. I like to tout that I'm a non-engineer. My boss calls me the tree hugger, the bugs. I'm all about the bugs and bunnies. Uh, but he builds roads, so he says I help to counterbalance what he does because I come back in and try to repair things. We use like, computer mapping and CAD. We do a lot of drafting. We use the um, computer, computer mapping is huge. We look at uh, all kinds of data that is collected by the federal government, the state government, the local governments. We use that to establish baseline or existing conditions for water quality. We look at historical data and we can see how things have changed over time. Um, we even do app development, websites. We do mobile data when we're out in the field, we're collecting data. We've got staff, IT staff, who go in and use programs and develop forms and do all of the programming, and computer programming, so that we can easily collect our data in the field. It links us to where we are, we can take a photo, all of it's just linked and then it's uploaded into the cloud and then we can access it in real time. Um, so it's not just about biology, it's not just about engineering, it's not just about math. We use a variety of skill sets in, in my office and um, within our whole company to help do what we do. Uh, and this is just sort of an, some examples, and I kind of went over it, I forgot that I had some of these slides, but here's an example of computer mapping, our environmental planners and, and scientists looked at this watershed and said, well, where can we do restoration? Uh, and then we worked with other folks to say, modelers who look at how the water moves across the land and through the soil and what it looks like when it rains, and they say, okay, well, here's how much nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediment your practice may remove and help prevent getting into this local water body here. These are examples of um, projects I've worked on with engineers. So this is an existing school in Cecil County. There's a parking lot, there's a road. It was built before stormwater regulations were in place and meant that the water just runs off. It's not treated at all. And so we went in and looked for areas, green spaces that are adjacent to these impervious areas and said, where can we put in practices that will help reduce runoff? Here's another one, again, I use Cecil County as a recent project we just finished with, uh, with them, where they actually have an existing stormwater management facility, but it was built some time ago. The regulations have changed over the years as the science perfects, and they learn more about what works and what doesn't work. And so we have the opportunity to go back into those areas and redevelop the existing facility and add new things to it, help to improve um, improve the treatment that it provides. And that's it. That's what I do in a nutshell.